Okay, so today we're talking about clip skip, which is a technique that people have claimed can be used to make your stable diffusion results better. And some people even claim that it lets you generate hands. Uh, this is an example that someone used on a Discord server. They generated this without clip skip and then this one with clip skip. And like, hmm, you know, to me, it looks like the bottom one's better. Hey guys, future Luca here, just popping in to say that I made a bit of a mistake and I'm just here to correct it. So this is the second time uploading this video. The first time, uh, what happened is I heard about clip skip and it seemed a bit silly to me for reasons that will also become apparent to you at the end of this video. And because it seemed a bit silly, I did a bunch of experiments and tried to get it to work properly and I couldn't. And so basically at the end of this video, I concluded, hey guys, clip skip, it's bad, don't use it. But I was wrong. So over here, I've got some text from the sort of wiki on the automatic 111 web UI. And they point out that basically the only reason that you should use clip skip is if you're generating images with a model that has already been trained with clip skip. And basically no models have, almost all of them haven't. The only ones that have are like the, they're the novel AI ones. So that's clip skip. You know what? I'm gonna make a very simple flow chart, okay? Flow chart, there, very simple, now you know. Um, and if you're not sure whether you're using a novel AI model, then you're like, you're, you're probably not because those models are like leaked and they're illegal. I, I did a video on what happened there. A lot of people did videos on what happened there. If you want it from the official automatic 11.11 wiki, some models were trained on this kind of tweak, this clip skip thing. So setting this value helps produce better results on those models. So for the most part, you can just ignore this setting completely and go on your merry way. So that's what I would recommend. The, the next six or so minutes of this video are past me. That old donkey's testicle explaining how clip skip works under the hood and why therefore it's a bit silly to do it. You know, unless you have a really good reason. And you might think, ah, oh, you know, I don't really need to know about that. I don't even know how stable diffusion really works under the hood. That's not really important for me. Um, but take a, take a lesson from my book, okay? And keep in mind that the 10 minutes of research can save you 10 hours of making a long, stupid YouTube video that doesn't actually make sense. And the only thing I ask, here's the call to action for this video, okay? If you see someone asking about clip skip in like a forum or something, just tell them. Like leave them a comment, be like, hey bro, this is what it is. Cause that way they won't spend like eight hours in the weeds. Okay, so starting from the top, perhaps you've heard the name Clip before. Clip refers to this model that a bunch of smart people built. It's an open AI paper, which whatever your opinions are about open AI, we can all agree that their papers are like really good. And the result of that paper, at least the result that's important for us, was this model that takes in a bunch of text and spits out an embedding, which captures the meaning of that text. For the record, clip is referring more to like the training process than this particular text encoder. But when people refer to clip in the context of stable diffusion, uh, that's what they're referring to, is this, this text encoder model. Okay, so clip, it's like, it's a fancy model. You give it a sentence like a human hand, it grabs that sentence and it spits out uh, an embedding. We're not gonna focus on what an embedding is today. It's just basically a bunch of numbers and the numbers encode some important information about a human hand. Okay, so that's like a high level of how Clip works, but let's just go a little bit deeper this time. Inside, Clip is made up of these things called transformer layers, which they take in a bunch of numbers and spit out a bunch of numbers, just like most things in machine learning. But basically what happens is you start with your, your regular text that you have, um, and it gets put into something called a tokenizer, which turns the text into numbers, which are like easy to work with. Tokenizer spits out this tokenized text. The tokenized text goes to the first transformer layer. The transformer does some processing on that tokenized text and gets this preliminary embedding, which is just like the final embedding you get at the end, but it's like, it's like not properly fully formed. And basically this preliminary embedding, you can think of it as doing a pretty rough job of approximating the meaning of the sentence that we got in. Throughout the whole clip process, all we do is we keep passing these preliminary embeddings into transformer layers 
And as we, as we do that, the transformer applies some processing and the embedding gets a little bit better and better each time until finally, on the final layer, we actually just pass out the final embedding. So if we just sort of look at this as like a single, a single entity, a single black box, this is, the, this is how the clip model works. You pass in a human hand, it does a bunch of stuff and you get out an embedding and inside what it's doing is it's passing the embedding through all these different transformer layers and each time gets a little bit better until finally we feel like it's good enough and we get our final embedding. That's, that's how clip works. Cool. But then the question is, well, what role does clip play in stable diffusion? So let's say, again, we wanna generate an image of a human hand. So we'll grab this. Well, on a very high level, what happens is you pass a sentence uh, into stable diffusion. This is assuming you're doing some text to image stuff. You just go ahead and pass it in and out comes a nice image of a human hand, which hopefully some have generated so far. Great. You know, these all look so good. I don't know which one to pick. Um, let's go with that one. That one looks nice. So that's, that's how stable diffusion works. You pass in some text, out comes the image you want. If we drill into that process a little bit, there's sort of this preliminary step where you have your clip encoder. And what actually happens is the text gets passed to this clip encoder and out comes uh, your encoding. The encoding then gets passed to the latent diffusion model, keeping in mind that the encoding is now supposed to contain all the information of the original sentence, but in like a nice mathematical format that can be easily interpreted by other machine learning models. And the latent diffusion model um, just does the iterative process of generating an image, always conditioning that process on the encoding it's been given. So it uses the encoding to work out what the final image should look like, and based on that, it's able to give us our final image. So yeah, this is what the stable diffusion process looks like inside. Okay, so now we know what the clip encoder is. It's uh, these bunch of transformer layers. And now we know how stable diffusion uses the clip encoder to create an embedding so that it can condition its generation process and give you the result that you actually want. Okay, uh, and what is clip skip? Well, clip skip is this, this idea where you go, okay, um, you know what, rather than taking this embedding here, uh, what we're gonna do instead is we're, we're just gonna take this embedding, this one here, and, and that's gonna be the final output. So we effectively just scrap the last transformer layer. Well, maybe if we're feeling like, you know, really fancy, we just take the one of the embeddings even closer to the start and we scrap the next transformer layer as well. That's all clip skip is. And the idea is you're like skipping the final two layers. So in terms of stable diffusion, um, rather than the encoding coming from the last layer, the encoding just comes from one of the intermediate layers. You now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, I understand all that, but why? Why would you want to do clip skip? I thought that the embeddings earlier on in the process were like worse and didn't really capture the original sentence that well. So why would we want to use a preliminary one? Well, basically, that's also my intuition. Like, to me, that it kind of seems like a bit of a strange thing to want to do because we know these embeddings are not that good. When the people who designed Clip designed Clip, they gave it the number of layers that they did for a good reason because they found that that was where the best results were, was waiting to the very end and using that final embedding. Um, they thought the preliminary embeddings just weren't as good. So that's Clip Skip. The normal image generation stuff all stays the same, the model stays the same, it's just that the clip encoder bit, the bit that works out what the text is, is a bit less precise. And that's clip skip. 